Well, hello there, all my friend. Bruce here. Well, this one was kind of a surprise to me. Uh, we live on a cul-de-sac or a close or pull-through thing. And all the houses face each other and everybody knows each other quite well. And this is from my neighbors, uh, four or five houses down. And uh, these are really, really good mowers. This is the modern version of the best mower ever made. It's got the Briggs & Stratton uh, 163 cc overhead valve. It's not the, uh, it isn't the flathead that I love so much, but this is still a really, really good lawnmower. Toro Moen Stow. So, uh, what I like about this mower is that some of these have the personal pace where the whole handle pushes forward and back, and those really wear out quickly. This is a much better system with the on off bar and then the, the lower drive. So, the the nice young couple that own it brought it over yesterday and said it won't start. The man of the family is a motorcycle guy and they are always good with fuel because they, they're running their bikes eh? and they store their bikes. And that gas looks good. I'm going to put it right back in here. So I'm going to try to start it. It'll probably start. It didn't last night. I just it came in and I just yanked the cord. Come on. Hmm. There. To there. Let's see if she goes. Automatic choke too, right? Oh! The old mower that starts and stalls. So let's get it on the bench, and uh, I'll wrap on the, the hoist, and we'll go to plan B. Good. And we're going to go to the other side. Oh, it's got the plastic carburetor on there, right? Eh? Okay. Let's just have a look under the air filter. Well, that looks good. Choke. Oh, the choke is open. Or is it? Hey, I get to use my new lights. And the choke is open. Well, it should be closed. There. Ah, now I bet you it starts. I'm going to lower this down a little bit. Sticky choke. I'm just going to lower it down a little bit to there. Everything's safe, I think. Oh, well, it's going to start now. Let's just have a quick look to see if that choke is open. Sticky choke. Huh. What are those? Eight mils? Let's just find out. I'm going to take a little peek under here. 
nothing crazy. And that one's bigger, I believe, those two. One, two. There we go. So I am suspect of a dirty choke. Just because the choke was stuck open. And in this temperature, this, the choke should be like it is right now, closed. Well now it's good, right? It runs good when it starts. I'm going to just uh, cover this up and clean off the linkages and get a light tiny bit of lube on the vertical shaft of the choke. I'm going to use a little carb spray and then some light, light oil. <clears throat> what do we use for a light oil, guys? <coughs> yeah, I got it. I got a frog stuck in my throat. Okay, now I'm going to clean off the carb spray. I'm going to take a little bit of uh, lithium grease if I have some. Yes, I do. Just a tiny bit, eh? Okay. You know what? I might have to take this top off. Geez, I don't want to do that. Is that a Torx? Or a Phillips? They used to be Phillips. It's a Torx. <laughs> yes, well that, that just gives me an excuse to try my new toys. I bought a package of these, all different size Torx. I gotta take a, a little bit of tension out of the rewind too. Is that it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> the two on the outside were threaded. One, two, metal to metal. And then we got, I'm gonna use just a little nut driver on these other two because they are plastic into plastic. Excuse me, I think I'm catching a little cold. That's my glove. Good. <laughs> I got the dropsies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, that's on there good. This is the very, this is the typical, right here is the typical Briggs and Stratton choke. This heats up and takes the choke off. 
plus a little bit of wind from the vein also blows the choke off. Oh, I saw it stuck again, eh? Look at that. Ah, it's sticking open. The choke is still sticking. Can slay a trees you up. And if you look, can you guys see right there that the choke is sticking? Right there, it's sticking. If I hold the light on it, maybe it'll look better. It's sticking open. Alright, I've moved you to just improve the light a little bit. I have to, uh, so now that we have found that that is, that the choke is sticking on that bar right there, you see that? We are going to uh, disconnect. I don't want to torque on that metal bar while all this plastic is connected. I'm just being overly cautious here, guys. So now we just have to modify this bracket. A hundredth of a centimeter. <laughs> but we have we have different ways of doing this. Now it looks like that is a that that pushes against there. Look at that, see? Look at So I'm gonna just try and put uh what I would call, now it's in my dictionary, you guys are watching this, right? Yep, it's in my dictionary, I'm going to put a Zuba in there. I got that word a long time ago from uh, a pal I went to tech school with. Okay, I think, boy there's a hundred ways of doing this. I'm going to bend this, no, I'm going to take this whole thing right to there, and I'm going to just bend it this way first. Yeah, that'll do it. And then take the whole thing and then bend it out. So I've, I've moved it in and out at the same time. Now I'll show you, if you really look, now you guys gotta really look. There is a curve there now, right there. That might do it, because it's exactly, uh, see there's a gap there now? But when we, pardon me, but when we screw it back together again, there might not be a gap. This is looking familiar to me, so we'll see how, how it goes. Okay. You always got to make sure you hook up that crankcase vent hose it. <clears throat> okay, flashlight for me first. Oh no, there's a there's a good sixteenth of an inch difference there now. I'll show you that. Can we get that little flashlight in there? Yes, we can. Okay, here we go. There's no binding there now. See if we can get the flashlight to shine from underneath. There, see the gap? We got it! By George. I'm just making triple sure now. So now I'm just going to adjust this. I'm going to take it and move it back to here. So so this rope's not under, it has a little more tension on it. 
So there we go, guys. I'll, uh, I'll just uh, do that tension thing, and we'll come back. Okay, here's a different angle. I'm going to use my new swag tool or swag tool on here. We'll see if it works. We'll just got to get you guys set up in the right spot. I'm going to go to number two and just give this a squish. I bet you that's what they use in the factory. Number two slot. You're darn tootin'. So there you go, Mick. I used that tool again. That's gonna work. Now we just put this in over top of that. There we go. So I don't know if they use that swag tool on those clips or not, but it worked. And all this does is keeps the rope from going too far in to the re rewind and then coming off the pulley. Lovely. Okay, we're going to back you guys up. We don't have the air cleaner on yet. But the choke is closed, so it should start. I like to lower it down just for stability. Are you ready? I should start. Uh oh. Although I did have everything disconnected. And it's closed again. So I'm just going to get my clamp. And you and I are going to have a look at that choke while it's being started. Please forgive me. I'm mucking around. It might shake loose. So everything else, this machine has very few hours on it, so I'm just going to clean it up and give it an oil change. That was interesting. Just give it a little bit of a... Let's have a look at the blade while we're uh, in the air, eh? It's fair. I don't think it's worth removing any material from it. Looks pretty good actually. I know it's dark, but it actually looks quite good. No gouges out of it. Okay, I'm just going to wipe it down and we'll do an oil change. You don't have to watch me wipe it down. <laughs> Alright, it's been running for a little while. Now I'm going to use Jim's, my friend Jim's, Fantastic invention here. Take this off. Uh, put it on the rack, right, excuse me, for going in front of you. And we will pop this on here like that. Make sure that this is closed, this valve is closed. Now it might be a little fiddly right now. So let's just, I'm going to go right into my tiny container, not a huge. Uh, not a huge, what do you call it? My first time at this, so wow.
isn't that a beautiful thing? Now, we just do this. <laughs> well, you gotta love that, eh? Because they don't put bungs on the old lawnmowers anymore, eh? Thanks guys, that's a cool deal, eh? There we go. Not bad. But uh, let's just come over here and uh, we'll see how much oil. Now, I think there was more than 500 milliliters in there. Just This is just strictly for me. Because I haven't made enough mess yet. Oh, we had about 550 in there. I noticed it was a little high when I checked the oil. That's just fine. Cool, eh? I'll be, uh, I'm just going to put 500 mils of the best in there, and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Is this worth watching? <laughs> okay, we got exactly 500 milliliters. That's about a half a liter. In some other worlds. So it's got oil, the blade is good, air filter is clean. I'm gonna take it off the uh, stand and we'll give it a we'll give it a test tickle. That's gonna go. It didn't like to be tilted, so I will check it in the morning before I take it back to him tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Hi hey guys, Chris here again. Uh, this is just at the end of that video. So I was, it was bothering me. I remembered something about that choke being getting caught on that little uh, bar that holds the carb. And I went back and I remembered it was Steve from Steve Small Engines. And I had no idea, but it took me a while to find it because it was in 2018. Four years ago that he did that video. <laughs> so the old noodle's not too bad. I, I kept thinking, oh, I remember seeing something about that stuck choke on a brake, stuck choke on a brake. And I found it on uh, Steve's small engine repair from four years ago. Crazy, eh? That's just fun stuff. Uh, we all do things differently, right? Thanks.